So long as these problems are not solved, so long as ignorance and poverty remain on earth, these words cannot be useless. These words open the second of seven broadcasts based on Victor Hugo's unforgettable work, Les Miserables. WOR and the Mutual Network present Orson Welles, distinguished young author, actor, and director, in an adaptation of this novel which he has made especially for radio. Mr. Wells plays the role of Jean Valjean, and he is also heard reading from the book itself as he binds together the dramatic action. Each broadcast unfolds a moving chapter in the progress of Valjean. Last week, we pictured the meeting of Jean Valjean with the bishop and the regeneration of his tormented soul. Les Miserables, part two, the episode which is called Javert. Napoleon was at St. Helena. A thing which smoked and clacked on the Seine went and came beneath the windows of the Tuileries. It was a sort of toy called the steamboat. 1817. It was in this year that four young gentlemen of Paris played a joke on their sweethearts. One of these young gentlemen was Felix Ptolemy, and his sweetheart was Fontaine. Excuse me, please, ladies. Yes? What is it? It's something your gentleman left for you. But there's no address. See what's written on it, Fontaine. It says, this is the surprise. Oh, what's inside? Just a moment. Sweetheart, at the moment when you read this, Four mettlesome horses will be bearing us back to our mamas and papas. We are returning to society, to duty and to order on a full trot at the rate of three leagues an hour. Mourn for us rapidly and replace us speedily. Adieu. Signed, Blancheville, Fanny Listolet and Felix Ptolemy. P.S. The dinner is paid for. It was a good joke. The girls laughed. Fontaine laughed like the rest. But later she wept bitterly. For Ptolemy was her first love. And the poor girl had a child. This, it will be remembered, was in 1817. At 22 years of age, on a fine spring morning, Fontaine left Paris, her child in her arms. She went back to Montreux, where she was born, and she found the little city greatly changed. An unknown man, a stranger, had conceived the idea of substituting gum lac for resin in the manufacture of synthetic jet. This very slight change worked an industrial revolution. In less than three years, the inventor of this process had made a fortune for himself and for the whole region. He had built a great factory in which there were two workshops, one for men and the other for women. Yes, what is it? Are there jobs open in the workshop? There are always jobs here. Have you a husband? No, monsieur. Any dependents? No. Name? Uh, Mademoiselle Fantine. You will commence today. Monsieur Madeleine, the owner, requests only that you be willing and of good morals. Oh, yes, monsieur. I'll assign you to your place. Come with me. So Fantine went to work in the jet factory and kept her secret. For as long as she stayed there, they must never find out about her child. She had left this child in the care of a couple she met on the road to Paris. They were innkeepers, and they were called the Tenadiers. She paid them 57 francs, all that she had, and she trusted them. A letter for you, mademoiselle. Thank you. My dear madame, your little Cosette has outworn her wardrobe. It will be impossible for us to keep Cosette with us any longer 
for less than 12 francs per week, payable in advance. Sincerely, Thénardier. They had pawned the child's wardrobe. Who were these Thénardiers? The woman was a brute, and the man was a blackguard. But Fontaine knew nothing of this, and she sent them the money. The child's clothes being gone, they dressed her in rags. And they fed her on scraps, little better than a dog, and a little worse than the cat. They put her to work. She was made to run errands, to sweep the rooms, and the yard, and the street. In the village, they call this little child the lark. This tiny being, no larger than a bird, trembling, frightened and shivering, awake each morning, first of all in the house and in the village, and always on the street or the fields before dawn. But the poor lark never sang. Fontaine took a small room and furnished it on the credit of a future labor. She worked hard, thought of nothing but Cosette, and was almost happy. Not being able to say she was married, she took care not to speak of her child. But the women began to whisper in the workshop, and Fontaine was watched. More than a few were jealous of her fine teeth and her golden hair. Mademoiselle! Oh, yes, monsieur. You have been with us in this establishment for over a year. Here are 50 francs. 50 francs? They are donated by your employer, Monsieur Madeleine. They will cover your expenses. I must ask you to seek employment elsewhere. Elsewhere? What do you mean? Mademoiselle, the existence of your child has been revealed to us. Good day, Mademoiselle. Fontaine offered herself as a servant, but nobody wanted her. She began to make coarse shirts for the soldiers. For 12 sous, she sold 17 hours a day, but her creditors gave her no rest. How could she pay? She couldn't. How could she live? She learned. She learned from an old woman who sewed with her, named Marguerite. We who have grown old in privation can extract much from a sou. But 15 francs, Marguerite. Think of it. The Thénardiers wrote me. They want three more francs a week, and, and you know what I earn. You'll learn. But you can't live on six sous a day. No, my girl. But you can starve on it. It's a science. Summer passed away, and winter returned. Short days and less work. In winter, there is no heat, no light, no moon. Evening touches morning. The whole day is a cave, and the sun is a pauper. Madame Fantine, Cosette is sick of an epidemic disease, a military fever. She must have medicine, and drugs are dear. Unless you send us 40 francs within a week, the little one will die. Sincerely, Thénardier. <laughs> The secret of the Orient. Ladies and gentlemen, I offer during my brief stay in this beautiful city the seven wonders of the world. No wheel is so great, but I own its memory. Heartaches and toothaches. The elixir of life, the powder of love, the pill against pain. If your teeth hurt you, I will pull them out. Would you look beautiful? I will put them in. I have whole sets of teeth complete for your pleasure. Pearly teeth. Teat for any mouth. Ah, you there. You girl who is laughing there. You have pretty teeth. Sell me your two incisors, and I'll give you a gold Napoleon for each of them. Uh, what's that? What are incisors? Incisors, young lady, are the front teeth in the head. The two pretty upper ones. Oh. Consider my beauty. Two gold Napoleons, 40 francs. How much good will they do you? If you've got the courage for it, come this evening to the inn and you will find me there. Oh, no. Hold on, don't run away. 
God help me. Well, where have you been? In the square. There was a traveling dentist. He, he wanted to pull out my two front teeth. I, I should be hideous. I'd rather throw myself from the fifth story and first to the pavement. He told me he'd wait for me at the inn. What was it he offered you? Two Napoleons. That's 40 francs. Yes, 40 francs. They shouldn't allow it. Marguerite, what does it mean... Uh, a military fever, you know? Why, it's a disease. Does it need many drugs? Terrible drugs. How does it come on you? It comes in a moment. Does it attack children? Do they die of it? He told me to wait for him at the inn. The next morning, when the old woman went into Fontaine's chamber before daybreak, for they always worked together and so made one candle do for two... She found Fontaine sitting there on the couch. She had not been to bed. Her cap had fallen in her lap. The candle had been let to burn, and it was almost gone. The old woman looked at her. What's happened now? Cosette won't die of that sickness for lack of drugs. Look there on the table. Two gold Napoleons. A fortune. Where'd you get them? I got them. Then Fontaine smiled. The dying candle lit up her face. The corners of her mouth were stained with blood. The two teeth were gone. Madame Fontaine, send us 100 francs or we will put out your child on the highway. 100 francs. Can I sell for 100 francs? Come. I shall sell what is left. What is the history of France? It is society buying a slave. From whom? From misery, a soul for a bit of bread. Alas, what are these destinies? Why are they so? He knows that sees all the shadow. He is alone. His name is God. Monsieur Madeleine was well-loved in the village. But sometimes, when he passed along the street, calm, affectionate, followed by the benedictions of all, it happened that a tall man, wearing a flat hat and an iron gray coat, and armed with a stout cane, would turn round abruptly and follow him with his eyes until he disappeared. This man was one of the police. His name was Javert. The peasants of Asturias believe that in every litter of wolves there is one dog which is killed by the mother, lest on growing it should devour the others. Give a human face to this dog son of a wolf and you will have Javert. This man laughed rarely and terribly. And around his nose there was a wrinkle as broad and wild as the muzzle of a fallow deer. Javert with an eye always fixed upon Madeleine. The Notebook of Inspector Javert, January 9th, 1818. Who is Madeleine? No one knows. Who are his family? What is his history? Where does he come from? No one knows. He is popular for his deeds of charity, which are done secretly, as though they were bad deeds. He's been offered the Legion of Honor. He's refused it. Who is that man? I cannot be sure of what I guessed. 
but I know well I have seen him before. April 10th, 1820. Madeleine is in mourning for a certain Bishop of D. I watch him carefully. His speech is more mannerly and his accent more refined than it was when I first came to the city. He walks strangely, with one foot dragging. He knows I am watching him. August 17th, 1822. The king has appointed Monsieur Madeleine the mayor of this city. Consider, the man came here with only a few hundred francs. He is now a millionaire. This is a sudden rise. I have now learned the circumstances of his arrival into this place. He came here a common laborer, stick in hand and sack on his back one evening in the autumn of 1815. That night, October 23rd, there was a fire in the townhouse and this man leapt into the flames and saved from burning two children of the captain of police. As far as can be ascertained in the excitement and gratitude of the occasion, no one thought to ask him for his passport. There is certainly no record. He announced himself Madeleine, and so he has remained. I have made inquiries in Paris, and there are interesting circumstances relative to October 1815. Madeleine is now my immediate superior. Police routine brings me into contact with this man. He's well loved, but I am not deluded. I am still vigilant. I know that face. That year, there occurred two events on the streets of Montreuil, which, while insignificant in themselves, made a profound impression on the mind of Inspector Javert. The first was a common street accident. Help! Help! What's the matter? What happened here? Inspector! Inspector! Can't we do something? Somebody move this! Don't kill the boy! It's too late! One moment, monsieur! How did it happen? The old man! The horse slipped! The car turned over on him! He's slipped under, under the wheel! It's crushing his ribs! Get a jack! Has anybody a jack? God help me! God help me! Get a jack! They've gone for one! That wagon is sinking lower every minute! It can't be helped, the sir! Wheel, the wheel is killing me! Citizens! Listen to me. There is one chance. There's just room enough for one man to crawl in under that wagon. In half a minute, it'll be too late. Oh! Citizens, there is no time to lose. What can you do? What can you do, Inspector? If a man can get under that wheel, there may be hope for you. If a man can get under that wheel and lift it with his back, we may save you. Is there a man who can do it? Who has strength and courage? Five Louis d'or for the man who will try it. Ten Louis d'or. Ten Louis d'or. He must be a terrible man who can raise a wagon like that on his back. I'm dying. My ribs are breaking a jack. Anything. Oh. Let me by. Let me by. Let me by, citizens. Don't do it. Come back. You'll be killed. Stop him, somebody. Stop him. Monsieur, it is too late. Let me by, Inspector. As you wish, monsieur. No, no, go away. Don't come under here. It's too late. You let in the car. Ah! Go away. Get out while you can. It's sinking. Get out. It's sinking. He's got there himself. They'll both be killed. Push. Push. It's lifting. Push. 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 brave man. Thank you, Inspector. In all my life, I have known only one man capable of doing what I have just seen you do. He was a convict in the galleys at Toulon. Good day, Inspector. Good day, Monsieur Madeleine. That was the first incident. The second to impress Inspector Javert of the police took place on an evening in January, five months later. It was snowing. A woman, a rueful, bedizened spectre, 
her shoulders bare in a gaudy ballroom dress, stood waiting in the street before the door of the officer's cafe, a well-dressed idler was amusing himself, tormenting this woman. Well, aren't you the ugly one? Oh, smoking tonight. All right, your haughtiness. Turn your back on me. You'll pay for it. A little snow will be good medicine. Down your shoulder blades like this. The girl, screaming with rage, turned on him and buried her nails in his face, using the most frightful words that ever fell from the off-scouring of a guardhouse. A large crowd formed about them. The man, hatless, defending himself. The woman, kicking and striking, shrieking, toothless, and without hair, livid with anger and hideous. <laughs> Suddenly, a tall man advanced quickly from the crowd and seized her by her muddy satin waist. Their tormentor stole away. The woman turned pale with horror. She recognized Javert. Stop. Go home, all of you. It is not permitted that crowds form on the streets. Gentlemen, disperse. Young woman, I must take you to prison. Come with me. To prison? To prison? Oh, no, monsieur. What is your name? Fantine. I have a good memory. This time, it's six months. Six months? Six months in prison? Oh, no. No, I must earn money. I, I still owe 100 francs to the Thénardier. I must ask you not to cause a disturbance. Oh, monsieur Javert, please. I swear to you, by the good God, I was not in the wrong. Have they the right to throw snow down our backs? He said, you're ugly, you've no teeth. I know I've no teeth, but I didn't do anything. No, what of his hat in the snow? Well, I, I did wrong to spoil his hat, but you can't imprison me for that. I, I must pay a hundred francs so that they'll turn out my cosette. She's such a little one, they would put out in the highway in the very heart of winter. If she were older, she could earn a living, but... She's not yet sick. Come along. I've heard your story. You have six months. Oh, mercy, Get no! Up, you fool! Do I have to drag you One on? moment, if you please. Let me help you. Citizen, I warn you, don't obstruct the course of justice. There, there, mademoiselle. You'll be all right. This is insolence. Who are you? My name is Madeleine. The mayor. Your pardon, monsieur. I didn't recognize you in the shadow. The mayor? Madeleine? Uh, is this the famous Madeleine? Take care, woman. Uh, Miss... Dieu, j'avais. Think of it. He's the cause of it all. He turned me away from his factory on account of some stories they told about me in the workshop. Stories about me, lies. You see how it happens? He did this to me. I'm sorry, monsieur. <laughs> this will add to her sentence. That's all right, Inspector. Set the woman at liberty. What did you say, monsieur? Set the woman at liberty. At liberty? What? You mean I can go... I'm free? I don't understand. Well, who said that? It wasn't the mayor. It couldn't be. Was it you, Monsieur Javert? Y you forgiven me? Oh, I, I did stamp on the gentleman's hat, but he, he spoiled my whole dress in the snow. We women, we have only one dress for the evening. Mademoiselle, how much did you say that you owed? I said nothing to you. You came here to scare me. I'm not scared of you. I'm scared of Javert. <laughs> Only tonight it hurt me. I'm not very well. I cough. Now something in my chest that burns. Here, stop, stop. Here, give me a hand. Now don't be afraid to feel how hot it is. Let's go, woman. You're drunk. <laughs> Officer! The inspector said you must release me. I'm going. Stop, it's the this woman. Who told you to let her go? I did, Inspector. Your Honor, that cannot be done. And why not? This woman has insulted a citizen. I have learned the circumstances. It was the citizen who did wrong. She has also insulted the mayor. I can do what I please about that. Your pardon, monsieur, but you cannot. The insult does not rest with you. It rests with justice. Inspector, the highest justice is conscience. I have heard this woman. Content yourself with obeying. I obey my duty, monsieur. I am sorry to resist the The matter mayor. you speak of belongs to the municipal police. But, monsieur... I refer you to Article 81 of the law of December 19th, 1799. On the subject of legal imprisonment. You are well acquainted with the criminal code, monsieur, but if you will permit... You may go, Inspector. However, monsieur... You may go, Inspector. Yes, Monsieur. Sergeant. Come, Mademoiselle. It is cold. I... I don't understand. Monsieur Javert has gone. Yes. Yes, he's gone. Don't be frightened. I'm sorry. I didn't know all your story. I never knew you'd left my workshop. 
I'll make it up to you now. Make it up to me? Yes, Fontaine. And don't cry. I'll take care of your debts. My daughter. My Cosette. You shall go to her. And she shall come to live with you. You mean that, Monsieur Madeleine? You swear it? On my word of honor. Oh, Monsieur. I am not a bad woman. Listen to me, Fontaine. If all you say is true, and I do not doubt it, you have never ceased to be virtuous and holy before God. That same night, Javert wrote a letter to the Prefet of Police, Paris. Monsieur, I wish to report that a certain face has always been familiar to me. Tonight, I placed it. I have further conclusive evidence. Monsieur Madeleine, the mayor of Montreuil, is wanted by the police for robbery. He is a second offender, being an ex-convict. He is the old galley slave, Jean Valjean. Signed by the inspector of police, Javert. W.O.R. and the Mutual Network have presented part two of Victor Hugo's compelling novel, Les Miserables, the episode which introduced Javert. Orson Welles played the role of Jean Valjean and also read the narrative passages of the presentation which he has created especially for radio. Assisting Mr. Welles tonight were Martin Gable as Javert, Agnes Moorhead, Ray Collins, Betty Gard, Hiram Sherman, Alice Frost, and others. Next Friday evening at 10 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Saving Time, we shall present Les Miserables in its third phase, the episode which portrays the death of Fantine and the capture of Jean Valjean. This is the Coast to Coast Network of the Mutual Broadcasting System.